Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 2. In the last part, we did stuff, namely exploring the world, and now we're in the Bosk sewers. And we get a longsword, which is a good upgrade for Guy at this point, so let's give that to him. So, everyone here is a sword user basically, or do they- I can't remember what weapons you gave them. Uh, Firian's gonna be using spears, Maria's using canes, uh, Min uh, has a cane himself, but that's just, he's, not all the fourth party members are temporary. Zombie! And, uh, and, uh, Guy is a sword user. Either way, zombies are the first one for the part. Rank one enemy with 30 HP, they can drop 5 to 50 gil, uh, they're weak to fire and they can resist ice. And as with all, uh, undead enemies for the most part, really, in this game, uh, if you use life on them, there's a chance they'll be instantly killed. And then there's their Japanese name, which is weird. Yeah, it's like Zombie, which is, mind you, that's a transliteration. A lot of their names are like that, but still. Really not too hard enemies. Uh, the later zombie variants get a bit annoying because they can stun you, but it's nothing too bad. And oh, a critical hit. Thank you for the HP. Later zombie, later zombies in uh, games, especially like Final Fantasy XII and stuff, those are, those are hard. I'm trying to think, uh, in terms of my Final Fantasy experience, I always think the worst zombies I fight are the ones in early 4, because when you're Dark Knight Sessor, you can barely do nothing, anything against them. But the, no, but then you have, then you have Palom and Porum to deal with them. Yeah, but when I was a kid, I, I didn't really know the weaknesses and such, and I always had Cecil attack anyways, especially with Darkness, because that really did do a good damage against a lot of early game bosses. Uh, when it comes to in battles, by the way, where Fearing isn't doing much, I recommend you use the heal spell or life spell on party members or anything, just so you can get it some extra levels, or experience points towards levels, because you really want to have some of his spells really high level by the end of the game. And here we get a longbow. Useless to me, uh, because bows, they're, well, first off, they, one advantage to bows is that you can attack with them from the back row, which you can't do with many weapons. However, they don't do very good damage, and they're just not very reliable in the long run. Anyway, the, uh, one thing I should actually mention in terms of translation differences, Bovsk is a weird translation difference in its name, because its name in later translations is Bovsk, but it's spelled with an A, so I guess it could also be Basque. I'm not entirely sure, though. Well, ba Basque is, uh, involving Spain. Yeah. Oh, and hey, the Dark Knight, and apparently he's still here and just wanted to gloat at us, because after talking to us, he immediately leaves. Oh, and hi, Borgen. You spoony! Guys. Bard. I have a feeling that was a tra the fan translator having a bit of fun with it. And there's the warship leaving. We should probably chase after it because as we might know, that thing is pretty destructive. Though actually, now that I think about it, I say fan translator, but there was a... Well, first off, we get the airship pass there. That Well, not the, the warship pass there. That'll come to play much later. Uh, there was actually a version of this game planned for release on the NES, but it just never came out. Uh, for reasons I can't quite recall. Anyway, we want to head right into Bovsk after we're leaving it through that little portal thing because there is someone I want to talk to here. We know the warship is heading towards Pop, so we should probably go check up on that town. But on the way there, you're going to want to get up to 1800 gil because after we're gonna, we head to Pops, we're merely heading to Altea and I want to buy a mithril sword for Guy. And this place looks pretty peaceful still, though apparently many people died. Uh, the PlayStation port onwards did add damage to the place, though. Let's talk to Sid. And let's, uh, save Warship to him. We must destroy it. And apparently, the, the Warship and Airship use a Sunflame for power. Let's learn that password and say it. It's hard to control the Sunflame, and excess of flame in an Airship's engine is disastrous. Okay, then. Well, isn't that obvious? Yeah. <laughs> Gas plus fire equals death. Kaboom! Well, technically speaking, if I wanted to go for the Wind Waker reference, cap BOOM! But nah. Either way, I still have to do with the grinding up to Please the Please edit in that little thing. No thanks. Uh, but I didn't just go for 1800, I actually went for around 3000 because I want to have a good amount left over. So let's go buy that Mithril Sword for, uh, Guy. You could feasibly grind enough to get a Mithril Cane and a Mithril Spear for Fury and Maria if you're following this as a guide. But, we're gonna find one, uh, Mithril Spear and Cane in the next area anyway, so, just keep what you got. Again, also at this it point, it, games do that a lot. Four, yeah. four does that in the, in the Dwarf Cave. 
Yeah, and you might be wondering, why do I have all of Min's stuff unequipped? Well, he's gonna be leaving our party shortly, so they just take all his stuff off. Because the next time you meet up with him, he'll magically have new stuff, which is much stronger than his previous stuff. Anyway, let's see what's going on around here. Save my know the warship's weakness. Yeah, we know the sun flame. Warship is attacking, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this place also has structural damage, by the way, in the PlayStation version, I believe, at this point. Apparently, Gordon, the, the brother of Scott, who we met back in part one, is missing from the town as well. He might, in fact, uh, if I recall at this point, uh, because of the warship, all the townspeople are not outside anymore. They're either in their houses or el elsewhere. Either way, after talking to all these worthless NPCs, by the way, I love that line, my luggage is too heavy! Uh, let's talk to Hilda. And apparently the king of Altea is deteriorating even more. So, Maria is saying Min should go help him. So, he's leaving the warship up to us. Goodbye, Anti, you were really good for MP grinding. Bye. Anyway, let's say Sunflame to Hilda now. Apparently it's Kashwan's emblem and sits on the castle's first floor, but we can't remove it by normal means. So, we now have our next goal. We need to find a way to harness the sun flame so we can destroy the war warship. Also, I don't know why I said it again. Either way, you were trying to say, Kenny? Uh, I completely forgot, since I was too focused on what you were saying. Oh, well. <laughs> ah, I gotta love that stuff. Either way, now that we have the sun flame password, let's go talk to Min in the king's room over here. All right, how you doing, buddy? And the fire festival takes place once every three years at Kashwan, and there the sunflame is transferred onto an egg yield torch for purification. So that is a thing that we can hold the sunflame with. So yeah, we now have no way we can get our goal. How are you doing there, King? It didn't really look like it killed hundreds. Anyway, Scott sealed Kashwan's entrance to protect the flame right when he was about to be captured by the Empire, so we need to find the Goddess Bell in order to get in. Oh, I remember this. The Goddess Bell. Yeah, now the family of Kashwan knows where it is, but Scott's dead and Gordon's nowhere to be seen. So, we have to MacGyver our way through some situations here. But now that we have that new Goddess Bell password, let's go tell that to Hilda, see what we can learn from her. And apparently Yosef's talked about it, so we should head back to Salmondo, which I am going to do. Right about... Not now, huh? I just when I did it. Oh, maybe I do after I leave, I leave the town. Sometimes I even I can't remember how I do cuts exactly. Sometimes I do it once leaving a room. Sometimes I do it when I leave a building. Sometimes when I leave a town. I, I'm very inconsistent. Why did you hmm. cut, not cut it out? Yeah. I don't know. Weird. Either way, now we're in Salmondo. Now, Salmando hasn't changed much since the last time we were here, but now we can talk to Yosef. Or Joseph, whichever one's supposed to be. So let's, uh, tell some stuff to him. Goddess Bell. Apparently it's hidden up north around a snowy mountain range. However, we can't enter that snowfield without the ice slave that he hid in the semi-cave. <clears throat> so, he's going to help us find it, and doing so, joins our party. Yosef is more or less a monk-type guy. He's very powerful with his fists. In fact, his uh, he comes already with uh, no weapons equipped, but his fists are level two. But it's not worth to keep any of his items on him. Just sell them. And you kept the garlic because why? I never use it, but uh, the garlic, when used as an item, uses uh, a garlic ability, which does... meh damage to undead enemies? I don't know the exact numbers. It's I want to say upwards in the 60s to 80s. I don't quite recall. Why, it's not very. Why worth don't it. they eat it for health? Garlic is a remedy food. True. Eh, either way, uh, let's sell his stuff because I want more gold. You greedy, money grubbing. I can't help it. I need more money. Also, you may have noticed I keep all the plot important items towards the bottom of the inventory so I can get all the items I want to use at the top. And now we're back in the semi-cave. Now you might remember, back when we were in Salmon the last part, a guy said there was something hidden near the blue rock. With that information and Yosef's information, let's check around here. And apparently, there's a secret passageway. So you Good couldn't there, enter Yosef. there before, that sucks. 
yeah, uh, Yosef is a flag. You need to have him venture here and get the ice sled. Possibly one of the weirdest transportation methods in Final Fantasy history. Why do you put so it without, towards the bottom? Uh, because plot important items you generally don't use as items. Uh, they work automatically or you use them when you are trying to tell someone a password or such. So it's not worth having them at the top of the inventory where items I should be using in battle could be. Ah, uh, got it. Anyway, now I cut back to Salmando so, you, we, so I can take you guys to where the snow cave is. Though, as you can tell by the top of the screen, the snow is immediately north of Salmando. Though, if you check the map, it doesn't look snowy, it still looks green. Either way, you don't even have to use the ice sled, you automatically come into it. Which, this does not look like an ice sled. Looks like a sh. It looks like a lazy remake of the ship from FF1, just on snow. Actually, now that I look at it, uh, do you ever watch Avatar Last Airbender all the way through? Yes. Who, do uh, you who, remember the who doesn't? Who doesn't? True. Do you remember the Sandbender ships? Reminds me of one of those. Oh, yeah. Those... Either, either way, Kenny, go ahead. Okay. These are ghouls or yetis? These are snowmen. Uh, rank 2, 45 HP. They drop 12 to 100 gold. They're weak to fire, absorb ice. Simple stuff. Yeah, they're really easy enemies. A good physical attack will take them down. Also, Joseph, why do you suddenly have hair? Your profile picture on the menu looks completely bald and... Well, actually, no, I suppose his overworld sprite had some amount of hair on the back. Also, gotta love the great look of looking snow, right? Completely white textures. Either way, here's the snow cave. This place is deceptively long. And also gives us new enemies almost immediately. Deadheads, rank 2 enemy, 45 HP, 6 to 50 gold, weak to fire, resist ice. Uh, they also resist other stuff, but it's not important for right now. Uh, since they are undead enemies, fire and a life spell are the way to go. And I'm removing Furion's equipment just so the life spell has a higher chance of hitting due to the int soul penalty they have. Uh, now one thing I haven't really gotten over at this point is that you see me he was here is that Final Fantasy 2 was the first game to introduce multi-targeting. Uh, when you're on the party you want to use the spell on, press up when you're on the last enemy, and it'll multi-target the entire one. Problem is with that is that when you multi-target things with damage spells, it splits the damage amongst them. Though, uh, unlike Final Fantasy 1, no, like, no, just like Final Fantasy 1, actually, uh, there's no auto-targeting. If you kill an enemy that someone else was targeting, they'll hit nothing. That's what I find, uh, I find that kind of sad in Final Fantasy 9, because, like, when you use Cure on someone and then they die, you still end up using Cure on them, but it misses. Yeah, <sighs> I, always find, I always find that kind of annoying. Either the way, we got more enemies in this battle. Uh, Let's see. Can you go ahead with the first one? Uh, Icicles, rank 2, 60... Uh, no, not Icicles yet. These are ghouls. Ah, rank 2, 60 HP, 25 to 200 gil, weak to fire, resist ice. Attacks can inflict stun. They can be killed instantly by a life spell, uh, because they are undead enemies, of course. Yes, and shadows are rank 2 enemies, 45 HP, 12 to 100 gold, weak to fire, resist to lightning, weirdly enough. I am all uh, They're undead spell. enemies. They, uh, they, they, uh, obviously can be killed by a life spell. And their attacks can inflict a permanent darkness, uh, ta uh, stat, I be uh, status, I believe. Which you can only cure with heal, at this point. And darkness actually works in this game. It lowers your hit, your hit percentages, which is kind of annoying. Gotta wonder what's with the weird green cape, though. It's it. No way, that doesn't work. I was gonna say it's like a dead Link, who now has made his traditional suit into a cape. Uh, I was actually kind of reminded of. Uh, I think it was the overworld sprite of Kefka. Oh yeah! That totally works! Either way, the snow cave is actually really good for one thing, aside from possibly stack grinding later on if you really wanted to. The treasure chests in here are actually useful! We already have 250 gold and now we're gonna get some really good stuff in here. Mostly, there's one or two kind of meh things, but oh well. Also, uh, unlike what you might think, this water does not hurt you. Either way, Kenny, okay. go ahead. Ah. Uh. These are Icicles, rank 2 enemies, 60 HP, dropping 12 to 100 gil, weak to fire, and resisting ice. They are not really challenging at all. Why don't they- Though they for some reason- Yeah, 
I always did kind of find that weird, but oh well. Though, uh, it's one of the- it's times like this where you really get reminded that, uh, Yoshitaka Amano did a lot of the enemy art, because that looks like something he would design. Gotta wonder how a mountain has stairs in it. Uh, I always took it that this was also some sort of ancient crypt or something. I don't know. Either way, there we got an Ice Wind. Uh, what that does, when you use it as an item, it casts a maxed out, I believe it is, level uh, Ice Spell. And you're gonna want to hide that in Maria's items for later on, because it'll come into handy real quick. Don't use it in any battles, though, because a lot of the enemies here are resistant to ice. Or just take neutral damage, which is not really worth using it on if they just take neutral. Either way, at this split, let's head north first, because heading south is progress, and when you're given a fork in RPGs, generally speaking, one is progress, one leads to treasure, or it's a dead end. Either way, next new enemy is a grenade. Rank 2 enemy, 60 HP, 9 to 75 gil, weak to fire and lightning, and they don't really do anything different from bombs. Other than that they cast Explode 3 when they die, if you if you let them get their turn when they're still max, when they're not at max HP, rather. Which deals probably around 70 to 80 damage, I want to say. Depends on what your defense is. In fact, uh, you may have noticed at this point, uh, all my characters have no armor on. They have weapons, but no armor. That is because at this point, there is no real armor that's worth the agility loss that the weight would give it. Uh, thankfully, by the end of the part, that will change, but... The early game, a lot of the armor isn't really that good. Why is there no constitution? Fire Emblem had a great system where if you had constitution, your weapon and armor weight wouldn't do anything. Well, it's like this is a really old RPG, and even then, uh, that's more prevalent in uh, tactical RPGs than in main ones. In fact, uh, but past a certain point, it doesn't really think it matters. I know, we got a battle axe there. That is a... F it's not a very good axe, but you're gonna want to hold on to it for later. Do not sell it. In fact, you're gonna want to do that for a couple of things in here because it'll come in handy for a later party member. And we got an antidote there. That's useful, I guess, because I think there might be some enemies in here that can poison you. And in here we get a mithril cane, but also monsters in a box! And they're all grenades! You might be wondering why you're seeing this instead of me cutting it out. Uh, monster in the boxes I look at as kind of mini boss fights, so we're keeping them in for any given monster in the box from here on out. Yay! I can't wait to Not keep in the behemoths that we fight in four. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to fighting the Marlboros in the Sylph Cave. Ooh, I forgot about that. You're gonna have a lot of fun watching me die during four. Oh boy. I'm gonna do four at some point, but I don't know when. Same here, though. I'm likely to do the PSP version. Either way, we got a Mithril Cane there, which is so much better. <laughs> now Maria can actually do decent dam physical damage. Her power may go may go down, I believe it is, when you use enough in uh, intellect raising stuff like Black Magic. I forget exactly what I said the other parts ago, but it's still really good. Okay, what exactly is a cane in this game? Is it like a, a cane a cane that helps someone walk and then you bash someone on the head with it or something? Uh, do you remember what the heal cane looked like in Final Fantasy V when you use that against a, one of your party members to heal them? No, I don't. Well, okay, here's a good way to describe it. Uh, physically, it looks like a question mark without the dots. Just that they that the holding part's a lot longer. Oh. Uh, some oh, of so them like aren't hurting, actually canes. Hurting cane, I see. Yeah, some of them aren't technically canes, some of them are technically maces, but they're useful, I suppose. And hey, a potion. That's good for selling, I suppose. Or healing out of battle, but you really do want to be healing out of battle with uh, the heal, with the cure spell on Furion to get that higher leveled. Either way, that's an ice book. I'm not going to use that now, but like with the battle axe, save it for later. It'll come in handy with another party member. And over here, we got another potion. Eh, sail bait, I suppose. And in here, we got a Mithril Spear. Get that on Furion ASAP. 13 attack, 25 attack. God. What sound effect was that? Okay. You really do want to keep your weapons up to date as soon as you can find a good one, because physical attacks in this game are really good. They're not as abusive as they were in Final Fantasy 1, as you saw me killing most enemies in one to two shots, but still pretty decent. 
And here we got a Mithril Shield. Uh, equip that on whoever you want, really. I'm gonna put it on Yosef for now, but later on you might not want to do that. In fact, before the dungeon ends, take it off of him. But uh, do not sell that after taking it off him, though, because you want to. You're gonna want to hold on to it for later. Either way, Kenny, go ahead. Okay. Uh, a dual head. This is it. A rank two enemy, uh, 80 HP, 12 200 gil, can drop a mace. Uh, cane type weapon, nine attack. I don't think it's better than the mithril cane. Or a it battle axe, nice. second weakest axe in the game, 15 attack. So if you didn't, so if you actually got one from him as a drop, uh, you could feasibly sell the other one for extra gold, but I'm not going to. Either way, we want to head down to this chest, which is another monster in the box, by the way. But it contains the ancient sword, which I absolutely love. As soon as this battle against a shadow, two shadows, and a ghoul ends, put that in, guys, item slots. The ancient sword is not very powerful. In fact, I think it's like the fourth or second, uh, no, fourth weakest blade in the game. And it might have low hit percentages, but if it hits, it has a chance of inflicting a curse status ailment on enemies, which lowers physical attack, magic attack, Physical defense, magical defense, and is overall really good as a boss destroyer. And later enemy destroyer. Keep that on him for more or less the entire game unless I tell you to take it off of him for another item. And then there's the ancient sword in 12, which is super overpowered if you can get it early on in the game through lucky RNG abusing and treasure chests. Ugh. Yeah. I hate I still think 12 treasure again. system. 12 has a lot of annoying systems. Like, I hate how little guild there is if you don't steal from enemies. Well, I mean, you can get infinite also, gil by killing as many, like, y Ogier Yensa things. Yeah, but also, one of my biggest problems with that game is that Vaughn isn't too important in the long scheme of things. No, he's that not. That game's more about Ash. The important ones are Bosch, Balthier, and Ash. Especially Ash. Which, I do recall hearing that at some point he was just designed to be kind of a character that could be liked by the audience, but I didn't like it too much. Either way, what? these are beavers. Beavers? Beavers don't talk too much. But God can understand this one randomly enough. So let's say God is Bell. Apparently there's one hidden behind the right wall. So let's head over to the right. Why this song? Do you recognize that? No. <laughs> oh, you kid. Oh, so uh, That was the... If he, that it was doesn't ring a bell to me, but if you remind me, then... That is the theme song to an old 90s Nicktoon by the name of Angry Beavers. <laughs> which I absolutely loved. Uh, in fact, one of them was actually voiced by the voice actor who would later voice Zim. Oh. The, it's an old favorite of mine. The moment I walked in, I was like, I have to insert it. But the uh, the beavers are more or less the precursors to the Moogles. Either way, here's where our goal is. And here we get a silver plate. Put that on Yosef for now. Uh, take it off before the dungeon is done, though. Because that's the first equipment, that the first body equipment that's really worth it because its uh, defense outweighs the agility loss. Either way, before we're talking to that turtle thing, put everyone but Guy in the back row. Because it's the Guardian of the Goddess Bell, which is an Adamantois. Rank 5 enemy, 675 HP. I'm looking at the uh, PSP version, I just realized. Rank 5 enemy, 450 HP, 200 to 500 gil. Weak to ice, resists lightning, and poison, actually. So if that's you drop why a you diamond use the shield, ice wind on it. Yep, two kill it in one shot, hopefully. And boom. He could potentially be really annoying if you don't do that, because he has really high physical defense, like 60, I want to say. So, kill him with that. And investigate that, and behind the wall, we find the Goddess Bell. By the way, Kenny, did you hear the very beginning of the boss theme there? Yes. <laughs> it was... What do you think of it? Uh... Whoever... Whoever made that, it was not Uematsu. It was not. Actually, I will bring that up later in the part when I bring up something that the I later version, not, not, not the later versions had, this game almost had. I remember uh, learning that U Umatsu did not, like, he didn't want people writing, like, remixes of his stuff in these games. He wanted them to stay original or something like that. Yeah, I'll go over that at the end of the part, though. Either way, before going talking to Borgen down there, who's randomly here, put everyone but Maria in the front row and put her equipment into her item slots. Because you're going to want to cast fire on this guy really quick, even though he's honestly pathetically easy. Also, strip uh, Joseph of his stuff. Now. Because... Uh, reasons. Strip him of his stuff. 
Either way, get ready on those enemy notes real quick, Kenny, because he's not gonna last long. Okay. <laughs> You'll never leave your life. All right, Borgen is a rank four enemy, 240 HP, uh, 400 to 400 gil. What does that even mean? He can only drop 400 gil. He has multiple values of 400. Uh, can drop high potions, restores a lot of HP, uh, or a mithril, a mithril knife, knife type weapon, 400, uh, 400 attack, 14 attack. Can use Restore 3 on self, which is like Cure 3, I assume, equivalent to a high potion. And that's it for the enemies I have to read. And he's dead. Wow, that was... He is pathetically easy. He, you should not die to Borgen. Usually, the most I've ever seen him last is two rounds. By the way, with that, we can lead... What? Oh, what? Boulder, what? Damn it, Crash Bandicoot! Can't hold any longer! Wait, Joseph, what are you doing? Joseph? Joseph? Dead. Uh, oh. Yeah, that's why you roof his stuff. So yeah, Joseph's dead. Let's move on. But first, let's head actually back to Salmondo so I can do some stuff. But first, let's actually equip that silver plate I stripped off of him to Guy because he's going to be the main tank, so you're going to want to have him up front with defense a lot. And keep the mithril shield, by the way, uh, for later. Either way, let's go tell Nellie that her father kind of got smushed by an Indiana Jones trap. Oh, and also the girl who was outside Joseph's house is taking after, looking after her. Uh, one thing I didn't talk to her about earlier is that she actually has a thing for Joseph, or had. But yeah, and Nellie's actually pretty perceptive to the idea that her father's dead. Hmm. Either way, with that, we want to head over to Bovsk, but first I want to do something. Uh, hmm. Oh yeah, I talked to this guy up here in the top left. A race of birds called Chocobo exists in a grove to the south of Casuan. <gasps> the introduction of Chocobos. This is, oh yep. yeah, this is the one that has like the super short Chocobo theme without the extra that I love. Yeah. Either way, now we're back in Bovsk because I actually want to buy three more silver plates. Uh, you can buy them here in the armor shop. Uh, you really do want to buy three, keep one for later. Uh, equip the other two on Furion and Maria, though. Why? Is got is Leon gonna come soon? Uh, I'm not gonna answer that, but you just want to have a third one for the next fourth party member or so. Well, I mean, if you're buying another silver plate, he must be an important person. Yeah, kind of. And with that, we're actually going to cut back to Poft, because the easiest way to get to Kashwan that we can now get into since we have the Goddess Bell is to take one of Sid's ships. So let's head on over there so we can check that out. Head into the pub. Go get drunk. <laughs> I wish. You don't have to wait too much longer. Eh, uh, yeah, but I'm not going to drink. <laughs> I won't. I'm a sober man. I'll Either way, take a little bit of can... Let's take the airship to Kashwan, and it's not an actual media travel. Uh, you actually have to leave the town and ent and uh, enter the airship. Which, upon me saying that, actually, uh, weird thing about Final Fantasy II is that there's two or three unused tracks in the game. One of them's an airship theme. I forget if it would have played here, though. And another one is a dungeon theme that would actually later be reused in Final Fantasy VI. Uh, the Magic House theme. Oh, dear. Yeah. In fact, on that note, uh, I was I, br I brought it up earlier with the, with the Origins boss theme, but Nobu Uematsu remixed the soundtrack for Final Fantasy 1 on the PlayStation onwards, but Final Fantasy 2's soundtrack was rearranged by, like, Suyoshi Sekito, I think their name is, who was actually the music composer for a game called Brave Fencer Musashi on the PlayStation. And that actually made me really happy that I recognized it, because the remixed... Uh, no, the boss theme that you heard earlier in the part, which is the remix of the main battle theme for certain boss fights, uh, sounds exactly like three s songs in Brave Fencer Musashi. So, there, the more you know. Either way, with that, and this really kind of extended outro thing, we're gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part four, we'll be checking out Kashwan and hopefully finding the sacred flame within here. Sunflame, rather. See you guys then. Goodbye.